Record on the cloud. The cloud. What up, guys? What up, y'all? Shit. I'm gonna let people trickle in here before I go in on explaining anything. I'm gonna give it like an extra five minutes, maybe. Yeah. Um. Dude, I still want to know the, who the fuck Triple G is. Yeah, I know. Triple G was show in yourself. Everyone. <laughs> Triple G's the feds. <laughs> Jerome listening to for strats <laughs> to bail to bail who's, us out. <laughs> who's my wife left me? <laughs> the fuck? Uh, you guys in your names, bro? I don't know. Hopefully, that wasn't whoever uh sent the review in. That was like, oh. to, like save my marriage. <laughs> <laughs> that show is so funny. You sound like you should be hosting a late night radio. Dude, true. Welcome to Trader Link at Night. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> uh yo. Loki, I wish I would have known beforehand that it was just going to be us. I wouldn't have drank all that THC. No, that's perfect. <laughs> that is perfect. Oh, I didn't know it was going to just be us until, I don't know, 19 minutes ago. So All good, all good. Yeah, yeah definitely fuck around with THC <laughs> drinks. They hit hard. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to like, you know, talk. I was just, you know, gonna be chilling here. But you know, we drink the whole <laughs> thing and we're good. I chugged it too. I didn't even like You just drink the whole bottle. I used <laughs> yeah. to get um in Colorado they have uh this like rosin drink. Oh, That's there's a, so good, dude. There's one it called like, Keef that I buy a lot. So good. Yeah, I used to get yeah. that too. Like, yeah, uh, but more recently, I was getting the rosin ones just because I'm a snob. Nice. Um, but yeah, the Keef ones. I had like a orange, a yeah, orange yeah. joint from Keef. That was yeah, yeah. banging. Those are good. Those are good. Liquid not here tonight. Yeah, haven't heard from him. Don't know really what's going on with that, but, um. Should be here on the next one. Yeah, he might just be sleeping. Working behind a Wendy's. <laughs> yeah, that too. All right, my wife left me. Is definitely Alejandro, because Alejandro probably saw him on his way here. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I think I'm gonna <clears throat> start getting started here. How many do we have in here? Almost thirty. Nice. I think we were getting around like 40 to 50, so we're like most of the way there. Nice. So today we kind of just wanted to go over uh, kind of our strategies, some strategies to use with the dashboard um, because we give you guys the data, but, um, and I go over this in stream a lot, but like, um, I think it's hard to like compile the data into a trade for some of you guys. So that's what we're here to explain. Excuse me. Here to explain to do. Um, so one of the things that we utilize a lot, right, is the app. Oh, shit. This isn't locked. Is the absolute exposure here. So we can hit the split and you'll get the absolute exposure strike. Now, this data is for the 25th. I was using this as an in an example for something earlier today. So that date is there for no specific reason, but um, basically you could use these absolute strikes for, uh, this is next day's data. So this is interesting. Uh, is this going to be here tomorrow? Probably, maybe, we'll see. Um, I like to analyze the morning to kind of solidify where these absolute strikes are. Cause as you know, if you have seen the morning with the exposure strikes, they jump around with the morning's data. So I like to let the market digest and kind of solidify its points in the market and then go from there. Uh, as you saw today, 
in price action this was the absolute uh game exposure magnet the entire day and we just revolved around it like a fucking snake on a stick just you know <laughs> bouncing from coming back to coming back below back to <laughs> the bouncing from over and over again so um this was um pretty cool to see i uh there's so many ways to enter from here i mean uh you could potentially um what's that there's a snake in my boot oh c can you explain what you saw at 5230 i don't know if that's a joke or not but i guess i can so maybe he wasn't on stream because you explained that shit like 83 times <laughs> yeah I, I kept explaining it over and over and over again but um so oh, it was a joke all right will this be recorded yeah it'll be recorded um uh so but um basically how i saw the or how i was picture what i was picturing on 52 uh 30 for those that weren't on stream today um and are just joining now um basically what i had seen was and i don't know how to really do this without let me think here can i choose the color no oh wait yes i can so let's just change this to uh black right and then we'll color this out so imagine this strike isn't here right we're gonna make sure we're gonna imagine this strike isn't here and this was the only strike here at the point right um and uh at this point uh spot price is actually above this so spot was something like yeah like between 55 60 yeah it was where like it something... just hung out all fucking day that was not a straight line but uh yeah, it's good enough yeah good enough spot price is right here guys all right that that gray line is spot price but basically right um something i notice here is there's a lack of exposures on this side um whether there's a lack of exposures gaining uh there's a lack, a lack of exposures in total um it's just there's an absence there so um immediately i'm picturing uh or i'm looking at these the exposures towards the the more uh prevalent exposures towards the left side of the um absolute gamma strike and these typically jump around um at some points of the day when you start seeing action they gain exposure um and sometimes what happens right is if you get a aggressive cell uh for example and you start seeing some of these strikes jump more than others that are in the same area um that will start becoming the new absolute gamma exposure strike and since i'm in the game of predicting things that happen uh this one will decrease in exposure and uh this will become the new absolute strike so this is what i was looking for basically i was looking for this to dissipate and I was looking for something in this area to increase. 52.30 in that case uh, was because I saw that one being more active than anything else. Um, so that was my basis on that. But you don't have to trade like that. That's just what I was looking for. And I know people were curious. So uh, that's a little bit more of a risky bet, really. So um, if you want to trade, though, and you want to, uh, um, you know, take safer bets... Uh, you could have played 52 or uh, 52 50 all day long right um there if you so the thing with uh absolute exposure strikes is you know where price wants to go to right if you know where price wants to go it makes trading like 90 percent easier <laughs> um actually that's pretty much the whole strategy right knowing where <laughs> in any strategy if you know where price is going to go and you know where price is going to jump from like you know that that what type of edge that has over anyone's trading strategy you can you don't even have to just use gex right you could use entries utilizing any other strategy but as long as you know that gex is telling you the price is going to go to and from that same price constantly throughout the day uh you can find entries utilizing anything fucking else i mean sometimes mm -hmm. i don't even i don't even use other indicators i just know that we're uh trending up and normally the dips are going to or the rips are going to be sold off into that uh, reverting back to the uh, absolute magnet here. So um, that is kind of uh, what I do most times. Yeah, and then another thing to think about, like you can, you know, Geo always talks about, you know, the dealers sort of come in and have to hedge, uh, have to hedge things within five to 10 points, right? So if we're continuously pushing off of 50 and we know they have that 10 point rule, 
okay, so they're if they're buying off of fifty and fifty's not going away, nothing's picking up above us. Well, where where would they have to start selling then? Are they going to start in five points? Or are they going to start in ten? As you can see throughout the day today, it was a, it was a ten point rule, right? So it's not always going to be the same every single day, but if you can estimate it's within five or 10 points. Another thing to think about, if we're going to be in a 10 point range, like you just shouldn't even, unless you're scalping futures, there's no reason to, to trade that. There's no reason to touch this. Um, and then, you know, knowing that, uh, you know, news was coming at one o'clock, you can guess, you know, perhaps maybe, at, you know, after lunch would be a little bit more exciting. Also means risk is going to be significantly lower. I think there was a some type of bond auction at one today. Um, at one East Coast time. So, um, you know, you can kind of kind of try and time entries surrounding that as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, so Glennie, that's what I'm trying to get at, right? Is that if as we pushed away from 5250, if you started to see strikes pick up above that, then we can, you know, try and find a target off of that. But today it nothing did. It literally just sat at 50 all day. So it's like, okay, plus minus five, 10 points off of 50. That's where you can look to either take off longs or start to go short to play the the mean revert back towards it. <laughs> exactly. Um, But yeah, I mean, so entries are kind of uh, where utilizing gamma exposure specifically gamma exposure you kind of uh fall short of um you can define entry sometimes but most of the time it's just defining a target um and that's like 90 percent of the battle in my opinion was that what are you saying 52 55 gex and 5240 were fighting each other all day yeah um i don't even remember seeing 40 yeah that's probably towards the end of the day i'd assume yeah i didn't see it towards the first half of the morning but um yeah that this is uh i'm trying to actually build our algo somewhat based oh on okay i mean i guess i i guess i can see how you know 40 slowly starts to pick up and then 55 is is like the second highest but we're you know i'm really going off of you know a what's the highest on net and B, especially in the week after OPEX, what's the highest on, as Geo has been calling it, absolute, I call it split. Yeah. Um, but same, same type of thing. And you can see going through uh, on the Discord, you can see how most of the interest like, is, is on 5250 on both sides of the fence, right? Obviously, there's way more um positive gamma at 5250 and for probably 95% of the day there's also more negative gamma there as well. Yep. No pickup at 50. Oh, it's after hours. I don't even think I saw 5300 today at all. Mhm. -mm. Not I mean maybe immediately on open but as as we always stress, don't 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 touch uh you know don't touch in the first fifteen. Yeah, open it's a recipe for disaster. Open sucks, bro. Um, um oh go ahead. Are you gonna say something? Oh, I was just gonna say, you know, I think strategy is is you know, like you were saying, Gio is kind of the biggest thing that people are you know sort of still a little bit confused on uh and the more i've started explaining things the more i've been thinking about it for myself as well um you know there's kind of two in my mind there's two strategies to play and it depends on um it depends on the type of uh, exposure environment we're in right so if we're in a positive gamma regime playing that mean reversion, which is exactly what Gio called out on stream today if you were there and exactly what he's describing. He just described right now, playing that mean revert back towards 50 and maybe trying to see if something below 50 will pick up to aim a little bit lower than there. So playing that mean revert on the second half of the day uh, in positive gamma or basically the exact opposite in a negative gamma situation and trying to prepare, trying to prepare for um the end of day squeeze that negative gamma will often lead to so one of the things that you know g always talks about trying to trade later in the day or in the afternoon um 
the the mean reversion trades I feel probably start a little bit sooner. Uh, and then the negative gamma squeezes start a little bit later. So, but either way, you're keeping your risk extremely, extremely low. Um, so yeah, are they all going to hit 100 percent of the time? Over 100 percent? Absolutely not. Uh, mm-hmm. But can you, you know, skew uh, skew your percentages a little bit higher? And also, if you, you know, hold, for example, in those negative gamma squeezes, you know, you can go. 50 cents to over $10 in 20, 30 minutes per contract. Um, so that's what, like 2000% plus in literal minutes. Um, if you, if you happen to catch that bottom and happen to catch that time of day, and if you don't catch it, you just keep sliding down the chain. Uh, Rumpel and I did that one day, I think when, um, we were streaming, uh, after Sheen was streaming in, in the mornings and we would kind of pick up in the afternoons. Mm. I, I, I entered way too early trying to time the bottom and got cut on probably like four or five strikes, took a final shot and, you know, took cons 0.4 to to 10.4 and saved my entire day in the last, like, I think 23 minutes of the day or something like that. Um, So it's, you know, if you want to bet on the data to be a little bit, to be a little bit more, um, you know, risk reward worthy, Playing mean reversions in positive gamma and playing end of day squeeze as a negative gamma is, you know, kind of the two trades to look for. If you don't see it, don't touch it. There's no reason. Um, You know, if you have a strategy that you can utilize where you can trade on any day and in the middle of whatever, then hell yeah, go for it. But the the biggest, um, you know, risk to reward opportunities come later in the day, in my opinion. Uh, And um, you know, if it's a negative gamma environment, try and play the squeeze. If you can't catch downside in the morning, if it's a positive gamma environment, try and catch the, the reversion to the mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, something uh we've been toying around with as a team, trade a link team. Um, is oh shit, my 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 fucking camera fell. Hold up. Um, so something we've been toying around with is using the uh split strike or absolute strike of gex at the end of the day utilizing a straddle um and then just playing both legs so uh once one of your legs goes 150 percent and the other one's minus 70 you cut the uh winner and then you let the other one run uh the opposing side down sometimes you'll end up winning on both sides sometimes you only end up winning on one uh regardless you're going to be in profit most of the time at least um mm-hmm. so, so long as you're uh, we fucking played it uh right after fomc which was not the move uh in hindsight now because uh it got iv crushed so then just both sides lost so there's you gotta like know when to like you know don't play it after a news day or some shit but um for those of you that like kind of like spreads because i hear that talk a lot um I wouldn't be married to a specific type of spread of spread because then you're kind of losing power of what spreads do in general. Um, you could play directional mm-hmm. types of spreads. You can play, uh, you know, condors or uh, anything that's like trapping a strike between two prices uh, and come out net positive on that end. You could play anything that's uh, jumping based on implied volatility towards the end of the day with the absolute strikes. I mean, I do a lot of this stuff um, in order to just stay versatile. Um because I think that's the that's the secret to like uh being almost I'm not gonna say a hundred percent accurate as a trader, but almost a hundred percent I would say, or pretty have a high fucking win rate is through uh being versatile enough to understand when to play naked options, when to play spreads, when to uh you know do this, that, or the other based on uh what you're seeing on the chart. Um now as an example, right, of slotting in a directional spread uh in like today's environment. Um, at any point when you knew that 5250 was going to be uh the the uh price for the day or the majority of the time the magnet, you could have slotted in a directional uh you know uh bear bear call spread um anywhere above it and would have made profit. Um and then towards the bottom side, I would have been a little bit more uh risky towards because uh I, I had seen the 52.30, and I, if anything, I would have slotted it below there. But um, I that's kind of like an experience based, like uh, understanding that 52.30 would have been a. I'm it didn't hit, but I'm just saying it could have. It really could have. So I was taking ten points off, dude. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean that's within the five to ten that you always recommend. The issue is just that today's range was so tight. I mean we popped what like 
80 points yesterday like yeah range is gonna be small the following day nine times out of ten um if it's if we go 80 up if we go 80 down then you know we might get some range the following day but 80 up i mean you're gonna or 60 up or whatever it was mm-hmm. um you know you're gonna have a little bit of consolidation after that un- unless there is just a massive massive sell-off but you could see in the exposures you know okay probably the lowest we're gonna go maybe 25 maybe 30 um, there was a little bit of a split interest at 25. Um, but, you know, you've also got to take a little bit of market intuition with you as well. Um, so, you know, you can't all you can't rely purely 100 percent solely on exposures in every, you know, every day in every environment. There are certain days where you absolutely can. Um, but in my opinion, today was not one of them. Um, so I listed two of the most basic directional types of spreads you can get into. Um, so uh, bulk put spread, bulk or bear call spread, um, two kind of the of the basic functions of spreads. Butterflies work, uh, iron condors, calendars, at the money straddles. I normally would stick to the at the money straddles towards the end of the day, if anything, because uh, mm-hmm. um, it just it's just too much time to let a spread like that exist in my opinion. And since you're only trying to profit off of a jump in implied vol, um, normally you're better off doing it towards the end of the day. Um, Someone told me it's a 40% chance after a trend day to have another trend day, but it's here, but bit trend day bit it's here say, Oh, um, I don't know too much about that percentage chance. Um, I don't think there's really much of a worry though to like, even consider that like a not like a factor like even if it was like an 80 percent chance that a trend day was going to exist after another trend day i probably still wouldn't bet on that happening if that makes sense uh every day that's kind of what the dashboard's for to just analyze the data and make sure like okay yeah. this, this might be a trend day for today if the absolute strike is like fucking you know 30 points away or something and it's already yeah. been it's already like nine o'clock um so yeah uh yeah there's... but i mean still it's still you know it's still a probability and just because it's happened more previously like every time you flip a quarter just because you flip nine heads in a row doesn't mean you know the the end flip is more likely to be tails it's the same 50 50 shot you know what i mean so statistics you gotta take with a statistical grain of salt yeah man um, another thing to note is that, um, and I kind of utilize this to my advantage a lot of the time is that we will almost never close near the charm exposure zero point. Um, there's, there's a reason, but why behind it, but I, I just, I'm honestly too sauced right now to think why. Um, but, uh, there's, uh, we're almost never going to close near the, the charm zero point. Um, so I would, take that also like so you could use that as a you could use that as honestly like the hardest resistance fucking possible um but like it's kind of rangy right like the zero point could have been anywhere from 5155 to like 5190 so um oh zero point is where charm flips from positive to negative negative to positive um so this area right here it's kind of rangy though so um i would only use this for example it, it I would only use this as an example if like we were to go down. So like right here, looking at, at the data, if this was a normal trading day, 5250 was a strike. I would wait for that to st- sort of disperse and then call out 5200 as a target. Uh, that's going to be a significant drop. That's going to be like a 40 point drop. And then since like the zero point starts at uh, 5190, uh, anywhere between that 5200, 5190 range would be a hard support zone. So uh, I would then start either uh thinking about a directional spread to the upside at that at that point um somewhere within that range or um just play naked call options uh to some point and uh withstand the drawdown uh of a 10 point move so um that is something i would ke- i would take into account uh when trading um let's see so if no strikes we're building gamma above 5250 the most likely to pin 5250 therefore but if i encounter would work hope i understand that correctly uh yes i believe i don't know if fatty wants to check that work for me though 
Uh, you're talking about Glennie's question? I was just typing yeah. something out, but I'll just say it. Yeah, I don't typically play calendars, so I'm going to leave that on your shoulders. Right. Um, but for a butterfly targeting, um, targeting 50 would definitely work. Um, and then if that, you know, starts to slip, you can then target, you know, 45. That starts to slip, you can target 40. And I think if like I, I don't I typically don't play spreads honestly um but I think in my messing around on paper uh accounts I was trying I was selling butterflies more than I was buying them um and then so like you can and you can get insane returns on them like risk one to make four risk 0.5 to make you know 0.45 if you structure it right um so you know you, you want to risk 500 bucks to make or risk 50 bucks to make 450. Um, you know, if you miss on 50, we'll try and fish a fill on 45, you miss on 45, fish a fill on 40. And, you know, we, we closed at what 41. So you're not going to get that full 450, but you know, you're going to get probably what, like 350 roughly. So you're going to lose a hundred bucks on the two you miss and gain 350 on the other. It's not a bad, it's not, it's not a terrible day. Yep, especially sorry, I'm reading you, this. Especially if you size that up. Um, to answer your question, Matt, Matt, uh, so yeah, charm zero point can act as a support resistance for sure, but it can also uh speed through charm towards the negative side. It's just uh um something you want to take note of as well is that this is an absolute strike, which is going to like you can I guess you could think of it as like layering resistance or support, I guess, on top of each other. Um, but um i would just play this area as a bounce more than anything i wouldn't expect it to zoom through it um another thing though like on, i guess for a three-step process on what to look for as uh for a trade is uh what zero point is on charm secondly uh the whole uh absolute gamma exposure strike thing um that i had mentioned previously where one dissipates and then it slingshots to the other side or there sometimes there's just one and we're just we happen to open above it and that's just a free, I call that a free Bebo. Uh, it just, price just runs right into it. So um, that's something I'd consider. Um, but thirdly, um, I would look at the DDOI uh, day over day. Um, it's pretty easy to tell right now that the only significant one is 5250, but that might change all by tomorrow morning. Um I almost expect it to change by tomorrow morning and I'm expecting 5,200 to be largely sold. So, um, this is, uh, the whole theory behind DDOI, right? Is that, uh, uh, market makers are almost every sold strike here since retail investors don't normally sell indices. Um, yeah, I do. Freezing to answer your question, I do use speed every week, but in non OPEX weeks, I use it on split, which nine times out of 10 is just going to mimic the gamma split. Um, it's when it doesn't that you can try and take advantage because towards the end of the day, you know, with 15 on the clock, um, the speed risk increases because the gamma risk increases. So if there is a larger speed split strike than there is gamma, I would, you know, basically put my chips in on hitting the split speed is it always going to hit again. No. Um, did it work on Monday? Fuck. Yeah. With seven minutes on the clock or whatever that was. Um, but you know, you just have to try and skew those percentages in your favor, basically. Uh, Matt, yes, there is an overnight market for options. If you have IBKR, you can trade it for SPX. Features market too. Features options. <laughs> Bops. Bops. <laughs> um, a trade link checklist. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if I had to narrow down my strategy to an actual checklist, which I don't personally have, um, my process, my thought process and everything's chaotic. So um trading is even worse. Uh, but I'm definitely looking at these three first. First glance, it's always going to be these three. Changes in what, what's changed overnight on this, where's the zero point on this, and what's absolute uh, exposure looking like on this. Those three, you this can make tomorrow, a lot of money. Right? Uh, I don't know, actually. No, it's uh, it it's oh, 21 it's Monday, to the, right? uh, 21st to the 29th. Yo, tomorrow's uh, still looking a little spicy at 52. Yeah, so long as this fucking... But um, 
Yeah, so I mean, with those three things, you can make a lot of money with guaranteed, um, or your money back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, another thing uh that I utilize from time to time is Lambda Vega Voma and Speed, but uh, only if I'm absolutely not seeing Jack on any of these three. If that's a uh, consolation, you don't. I I don't at least utilize any of the four unless I'm fucking absolutely stumped on what's going on here. It's like my my fucking three D analysis, molecular level analysis, <laughs> and then I get into like okay, what constitutes a positive lambda strike or a positive lambda strike, positive Vega strike, positive speed strike. Uh, what option has all those characteristics? And then I fucking go full acoustic. And then I start calculating the amount of delta that needs to be purchased and sold at a certain point. And then I'm like, why did I do all that work? <laughs> and then... Jesus. And then I cry. But... um, <laughs> I was with you up until the, the delta per share. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, that's not a necessity at all. No, it's not. That's why we have you. You've done this math for us and then put it in a, you know, visual understanding that I was able to pick up on. And yeah. now we, you know, I just rely on your math being right. So you get fucking <laughs> lit, baby. Uh, do you find data changing all day constantly or heavy hours uh, and slow? What? Uh, not too sure what you mean by that too. Do you find- yeah, I think I can handle that one. So yeah, I mean in the morning that's when institutions and those with a lot, you know, more money than any of us typically, or that we're throwing at the market on a daily basis, are going to be entering and exiting their positions from the overnight, from you know what new hedging requirements are based on the uh, evening move, uh, and then sort of same same thing at the end of the day. So you're going to have things are going to be jumping around like crazy. 20, 30 minutes after open and again, 20, 30 minutes before close. Um, so that's why, you know, trying to play, uh, you know, that, that, and that hedge that, that comes into place on a very short time frame, um, is where you, you know, you can make a wild amount of money for the risk you put on in 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, Geo, do you still use fibs and VP to plot levels? Um, th- that's like my fail safe. That's like nothing's working. Dashboard's down. Fucking, I'm on my phone somewhere else. What do I do? <laughs> like, like that's when I use those. It's like dire needs. Um, but other than that, I don't really use them too much. Um, yeah, it's uh, it used to be something I leaned on a lot. Uh, when I was getting into trading. And then uh, early into the middle of my trading like career, and then from like that middle on, I was just like, "This is too much work to fucking." It's not even a lot of work, but it it's like I feel like exposures are so like less work. Like I can come up with a trade in like ten minutes, and if I ha- if I don't know what to trade, I know when to trade. Like I'm like, okay, we're not exactly far enough to be like a mean reverting yet, so I'm going to just wait it out just a bit go up a little bit more and then i'll I'll know to take a trade so i kind of you can get an understanding of like what the market's going to do and what the market's doing currently and why it's doing it uh from a lot of these different tools we have here um footprint works wonders and yeah uh so it's not that i don't like footprint charts or anything i actually use uh i used to use them a lot too but um uh it's like I have like 15 tools I'm looking at that are all like, in my opinion, on par, like in terms of like, I can come up with a trade with any fucking tool I want. (laughs) Um, So I don't always have the footprint chart up uh, all the time. I just kind of look at it if uh, either I'm bored or um, the exposures are kind of foggy and you like, you'll see like, like sometimes you'll see exposure that's like fucking crowding this entire space and it's just a bunch of large bars, right? And then like you're like, what the fuck do I do? It's just a cluster. Um, so in something like that, I might like pan over to the uh footprint chart or use volume volume profile and uh fibs, but in that I don't. Um hold the target, yes. 
play the move versus play the reversal probabilities of each strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, so Fatty and I were actually talking about this before we even started the stream today. Oh wait, it looks like you're talking about it. Never mind. Um no, we, talk about it. I want to hear your your opinion too. Oh, so you were just saying like if you wanted max probability today, you could have played uh everything with the trend and everything against the trend pretty easily if you were looking at the exposures and you knew where the price magnet was. Mm -hmm. Uh and yeah, I mean if you wanted max profitability, that's what I'm getting some ideas for the algorithm. <laughs> um but yeah, if you wanted max probability, you could have, or in max profitability, you could have fucking played every single one of these little reversals into a trend following uh position. So there's a lot of different things you could have done there. Yeah, I mean, it also, you know, and I think Sheen Sheen talks about this a lot. Is figuring out what type of you know trader you will want to be or you like to be. Do you want to hop in, hop out a bunch? Um, do you want to you know wait till cons are super cheap and grab them and you know like geo often says maybe his entries aren't the best but he waits for his target to hit when it hits doesn't fucking matter what his entry is because his position's at least 100 percent, if not more um or it'll go you know minus 90 percent, and then thirteen thousand or whatever the hell that day was um it just depends on you know what you prefer to do so figuring out your style is i think equally as important as figuring out what you want to trade Yes. Um. Oh boy, I have an interesting theory. I would like to run by you. If you're able to look at every... okay. Sorry, I'm a slow reader. Um, I don't really know what you mean by this. I don't think those two are comparative in any kind of sort of way. Uh. Because uh, ES and SPX have two different properties. All right. Okay. So you um so you got to think of like SPX as three dimensional and uh, ES as two dimensional. Uh, there's a third risk factor that comes with SPX that affects the way it moves. Um, and that's why uh, SPX is the leader in terms of the three different types of uh spy indices. There's uh SPX, and then I would say ES, and then I would say uh spy uh follows. Um, the rest, and I know it doesn't look like it on a chart, but uh, options kind of direct the way um, for most of the most of the markets um, in general. Uh, um, a, so, uh, it's got like a a large supply in liquidity, um, and there's just a lot more. Uh, I guess uh, so. The options market is like three times larger than the actual uh, uh, amount of assets in the market i think i think i read that somewhere but anyways uh options uh features um are kind of two different types of asset classes and um hard to compare the two in this in the way you're trying to compare them i guess um but you could use it and learn how to enter yeah i mean um i used to use the 15 second chart for volume a lot um, and it was related to ES volume, not uh, like equ uh, normal equities or uh, options. So I used to use the 15 second to look at volume anomalies um, on the chart that would uh, either be a person trying to lead a trend or be a person trying to reverse a trend. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you can dial that in. Uh, question for both of you, are your ODTE trades short in length or fast? Example, one to five minutes versus 30 minutes or longer. How long do you, you hold and why? Um, My positions kind of go all day. So um, like I'll buy a position and I'll legit hold it the entire day. I don't care if it goes to minus 99%. Um, I think one of my best trades ever went from minus 99% to like 13.0 or fucking, I think it was like 12, 12.0. Anyways, um. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it just it just depends on on when they hit, right? If you have a target in mind and it hits in five minutes, hell yeah, if my target hit, I'm out. I'll often play sells once I enter. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, Geo does things a little bit differently. He likes to you know take what the market gives. I believe was his phrase that he used. Um, so he'll let it go, you know, a little bit further. I you know like to go to aim for my one to five, one one point five to five. 
So I enter, set a sell, and wait. If I go up, you know, over 100, 200%, sometimes I'll put stops and profit. If it's early on enough in the day, I won't. Exactly. It just, it just depends, you know? Um, hey, June Fetty, for the quarterly option expiration next week, what do you both recommend us watch and follow? So I have a pretty biased opinion on the next uh, quarterly option expiration. I think we're going to start legging it down, at least for a couple, like a week or two. Um, Honestly, with the, how strong of a market we're in right now, um, it might just be a short-lived week. But um, I'm expecting some sort of pullback in some sort of way due to um what quarterly OPEX is going to do to um, a lot of the systematic vault control fund flows. Um, but uh, let's see. Do... Yes, and SPX mirror each other. Uh, want the options flow to be greater than futures. Uh, yeah, no, they mirror each other for sure. But um, I guess the point I'm trying to make is the actual uh asset, like the so. Uh, <laughs> I guess the I the math is uh non comparable in a lot of instances is what I'm trying to say. Um, I think I'm a little too sauce to say that properly but dude i'm so behind on all these messages holy fuck <laughs> i'm still an looking at messages from 642 hold on uh catch up all day what does Unless charm it's zero spicy point do? mustard uh so charm zero point um is just it simply just means the uh change from a uh, positive to a negative uh charm relationship or uh environment and vice versa um that's what a lot of these zero points mean but uh charm is especially uh odd because we almost never get to that negative char uh, charm area uh and we always float above the zero point very rarely do we get below it and when we do get below it uh weird shit happens in the market <laughs> Um, this is what leads to like significant fucking charm squeezes sometimes. Kind of disgusting. Uh Geo does things hello differently. I'm just different in general. Um Sheen likes the paper hand. Very true. Um questions questions for both of you. Ketchup or mustard? I like Dijon mustard. Um Dijon mustard's goaded, bro. It's just so good. Um, but I don't like normal mustard. So um weird. Yeah, the question. yellow mustard is whack. Yeah, that like picking it just even the color looks off to me. Like <laughs> it's just too yellow. It's like I'm got highlighter on my, my hot dog, bro. <laughs> uh can you go over the average IV line again? Uh yeah, so I was talking uh to the squad earlier, and I think we're just gonna go ahead and make a class for that. Um, so I'll probably answer those questions probably maybe tonight. I might pre-record the class and like get it up as soon as I can. Um, so that's something we're going to do soon. Um, I'm kind of in charge of content for a while now. So, uh, yeah, just, just, uh, at me in the chat if I didn't cover something that you maybe wanted me to cover. Um, and I'll go ahead and make that video for you. Um, I'm getting a lot more comfortable being in front of the camera, believe it or not. Oh, yeah. oh wait you answered uh, a good portion of it dude yeah, actually I mean, that's it's, my opinion though so yeah, it's crazy how it's better it's crazy how much uh like implied volatility spirals into a, a rabbit hole more than any other like thing <laughs> in in the options market there's so much you could talk about in, with volatility because it's such mm -hmm. a fucking like unclassified fucking object it's insane um and she agrees with you, Geo. I gotta know who you are. Who's DB? Footprint is shares or options. Footprint is shares. Um, well, oh yeah. Uh, for the on the TL one, it's spy shares. Uh, normally it is a futures tool though, but you can route it with any type of information you really want. Uh, bear pointing meme. True. Geo still do a class session on trader psychology. Yeah, I will do that tomorrow actually. I'll I'll set one up. I 
You know what? I think I'll have I'll stream like my normal time, but it'll be primarily focused on the psychology stuff. Um, and I'll make sure to do it like in a segmented part of the fucking stream. Like I'll do it like either at the very end or I'll do it um in the beginning so it's easy to get to. Um bougie motherfuckers. Yeah, dude, Dijon goaded. Overcome anxiety. Yeah, dude, barely. I'm I just went outside for the first time in a while. Um strongly disagree. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, can you look back uh on footprint? Um right now we're only providing I think the uh previous five candles. Um we could add the entire day, but it's gonna look fucking weird. Um it'll uh like it's fixed to the chart, so it's going to like fuck it up at some points. Uh, so that's another thing we're trying to fix the actual charting stuff. So we will do that soon. Um, can you go over rubber band? What exposures do you notice? Uh, if slash when this is about to happen, uh, when something like that rubber band effect is happening, um, I'm looking for us, uh, moving too far up on a weak exposure, if that makes sense. So basically let's imagine that let's imagine that um this exposure doesn't have like half of it this shit's cut off it's only this now we're rising up from this strike in an instance so price is moving up uh this is an area where i would be particularly looking to short the market uh for that little snapback shit that goes down to here and typically the timing of this trade is everything that's why it's a little bit of a harder thing to understand uh this typically happens towards the end of the day mm -hmm. so um that's one of the main reasons why i hold my position so long uh if um i'm still not at my target uh i expect it to happen at the very end of the day just due to how um these exposures rubber band like that at the end of the day um because uh exposure decreasing and increasing uh causes whips price whips um can you, uh her class is a potluck mm. um but aside from all this i want you guys to try one of the strategies we talked about this morning tomorrow um feel free to post your trade before you take it in the discord so we could give you feedback on it not financial advice of course but honestly i just want to see you motherfuckers win so um i'll provide you as much help as i can um Shut up. So full port and let them ride to let negative ninety nine percent. Basically, uh, why is there a typical sell off thirty minutes before close? Uh, then a massive run up to the close. Uh, so at the first fifteen minutes of the day, um, dealers like to reposition, and then at the very last thirty to fifteen minutes of the day, dealers like to reposition twice a day, unless. Mm -hmm something insane happens in the middle of the day. So like if we get an underlying movement of more than 1% or something uh, in, in the middle of the day, uh, that is going to be grounds for a rehedge. Um, and a lot of these are based on a 1% move. Uh, I could do a dollar amount move, which I'm planning on doing. So uh, this will be alternatable between 1% and $1 notional amount. So you can see at what a dealer a dealer has to rehedge at every strike price, um, which is goaded on the sticks. Um, so that's something we're planning on doing. But, uh, yeah, that's why. Uh, there's there's no like I don't particularly know the reason why it's every fifteen minutes at the beginning and end of the day, but it just happens like to be that. Uh. I didn't even like that's not even from me that's from a book I'm pretty sure I think it's from the Nathan Nattenberg book if I do recall correctly 
Um, do you sell spreads end of day or raw dog calls or puts? <laughs> I do either. Um, I I uh, alternate between the two types of strategies. And sometimes like it's like volatility super low and it's just free as fuck to take a straddle or something once once if you're expecting a spike to happen towards the end of the day, um, which is nice right like there's like a almost like a price jolt if uh you're expecting a reversal to uh an absolute gamma strike at the end of the day um because sometimes we don't close at the gamma strike like sometimes not even like like 15 to 30 minutes before so there's still a lot of time left in the day to reverse back um like especially swiftly so that'll increase vol and then it'll probably profit largely off of it but Gio, when should we use the touch grass no jutsu during regular trading hours? The no touch grass or the touch grass no jutsu is honestly uh never. I've never touched grass in my life, but uh if you wanted to perhaps take a break. Uh if you're seeing something where there's a large block of just high exposures and price is slotted right there, bad boy. Right there. Don't touch this motherfucker. You see like bars like this shit? Oh hell nah, dude. That shit's the worst. Looks like Doodle Bob's tooth gap. Nah, man. Get get me the fuck out of there. Um, so that's those are the days you want to avoid. If you see Doodle Bob on the chart, bro, Bob's get the fuck. Tooth gap. <laughs> if you, if yeah, you see Doodle if, Bob on the chart, bro, is looking run. like Voma. Back <laughs> off. For hey, you gotta sure. leave. Exit the scene, bro. <laughs> um. I only try the strategies on the wrong days and the wrong times. Yeah, um, it comes with time understanding like what days to use, what strategies. Uh, but that's not like I can't really teach that off of the dashboard. I guess you can, but it's more so like uh, knowing um, and learning what are the best strategies for what conditions in the market. That like goes larger than like data and stuff. Just like. Like I, I learned how to use credit spreads first before I actually learned how to use naked call options, funny enough. Um so uh I was fucking born off spreads. Uh one percent being fifty two points of the current SPX price. Uh closing of yesterday's price. Uh, anybody else notice Voma have huge bars away from spot price? Uh dude, uh so today I saw Voma and Vega like have a fucking void in the middle between two large spikes. Like all this shit was voided black. Just like every I, like I was like, dude, what what's going on? I've never seen that before. Um, but um, interesting because we ended up passing by that entire void. Huh. Thoughts. Uh, holy guys, hold on, I gotta catch up with the messages. Uh. Uh, uh, one dollar move will be better, or does it change much? So one dollar move is basically you're able to see how much needs to be re be rehedged per level, uh, per one dollar move in the strike price. Um, so uh, eventually, if that amount gets too heavy, um, at a per dollar strike price, uh, you're gonna see some large movements at the end of the day. Um, markup tool for dash for us to mark levels. Um. I don't know how hard that would be. I mean, I guess it's a plugin to Google, so it can't be that hard. But um, yeah, I mean, I think that's a pretty dope idea. Would help with teaching too. And when you're bored, yeah, you can draw shit. I like the the new new data changes color. That's kind of a cool idea. Mm. Like if a new strike takes over as AOI. Oh right, right, right. And then fades to usual. That'd be kind of cool. But I mean, if you're you know if you're watching this, um, you should kind of have an idea or like you can you know, if you're marking levels for example every morning uh, or within you know 15 minutes of open and you you know your level that you marked at 9 45 and you go back and check the dashboard now it's not the same now you know it's you know different mm -hmm. i don't know um it would look kind of cool though paul i definitely agree with that <laughs> hi i'm paul <laughs> um uh yeah, Matt. So that's one of one of the things that in my um my speed video that I talk about is uh you know when Natenberg assumed like Vanna like the Vanna speed combo that I I like to to play off of. 
Um, that was a lot different back uh, when he wrote his book because there wasn't any zero DTE. Now that there is, you know, the game changed. Um, a lot more volatility. So, I, you know, I probably would say that there there is a little bit more hedging, uh, you know, beginning and end of day than, than there was previously. But another thing you got to think about is – the the mechanisms by which that hedging occurs is all computers right so it's it's not like humans 99 percent of the time humans aren't doing anything to to have an impact they just have their models um that define their risk for them and hedge their risk for them so you know as positions come in they're hedged literally you know way faster than you and i than you or i can click any buttons um and then it's just kind of trying to trying to play with them or trying to determine when that will happen so you can almost front run that move if that makes sense which is why geo is saying he's in the business of predicting not reacting yeah reacting is every other indicator in this industry correct <laughs> predicting is i can do that on the exposures if i'm expecting a, a certain type of move to happen at a certain point and i don't have to wait for that shit to actually happen to like be like okay it's happening um, I could prep myself and I <laughs> that's the reason I kind of uh really like these uh strategies it's because uh uh it takes me a while to like figure out what contract I want fucking like by the time I like actually get into the trade it's already been like five to ten minutes so I like taking my time I like mm -hmm. being like thinking it out hmm okay and then eventually um once price gets to the point where i'm like okay let's slot this in um it's either spread or fucking naked options one or two um so we're getting over an hour here i think so i'm gonna have to be ending this because your boy is hungry <laughs> and uh the sauce is kicking in so <laughs> mm -mm 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 -mm. Um, yeah, Paul, I, I definitely like that idea, but you know, that's kind of what I was talking about in the beginning of the stream or half hour of the stream that, you know, if, if we're in a positive environment, play the mean reversion. To, so, you know, you're looking for downside and a negative gex environment, play the end of day squeeze, but make sure that, you know, charm is ultra negative. So, because that's when dealers are going to be, you know, buying all that shit back. If or, charm is, you know, like negative a hundred bill or, or less, you're probably not getting that squeeze. Never apologize for asking questions, you guys. I fucking purposely ask you guys. Yo. Oh yeah, definitely don't apologize for that. You guys should yeah. see the fucking novels I wrote to Geo when I first came across them. It's we have I should, I should like this. to I don't relook at them. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. It's probably how fucking actually shows uh, how fucking little I knew. There's a lot of phone calls too. <laughs> there was a lot of phone calls. Um, I, I nine times out of 10, wait till after lunch for SPX. If I see something that's going to be like super obvious, um, you know, like one thing that I've been kind of like toying with is the, like the solid levels that we run into like 5,100, 5,200, 5,150, so on and so forth. Um, those kind of like solid levels, there is often a reaction at, and it's stronger than usual. So if we like get close to you know 5200 in the morning and we're below it and we open at 51 you know 90 and we pop up immediately to 5200 upright try and stab a short um because there's more than likely going to be a strong split gex resistance there but unless we're in like a specific scenario i'll, I'll wait till after lunch Bird. bro what Six dollars and fifty cents for a Big Mac fries and a medium soft drink. What the fuck? Say six dollars? Is it nineteen yeah. ninety nine again? The McDonald's app is so clutch. My friend showed me this last night. I fucking I've been on this more than trading you, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I use TL for equities. Who do I talk to? You can talk to me. So baby. After lunch equals same strike, half the price. Yeah, basically. And I like getting in at a deal, baby. 
Yeah, if you're selling spreads, then the morning is definitely when you're going to want to play. Um, you know, you're going to, or you wait until you're at the edge of where we think we're going to go, and then you sell. You know, like today, you wait until 60 taps to sell 60, 65 bear call spreads and then just wait all day. So the closer, you know, the closer we get, those premiums are going to be worth more. If it happens in the morning, even better. It just depends on what your strategy is. I I don't typically do spreads, though, so that's not what I'm I'm looking for. Maybe I should boot up the old telegram. <laughs> I need dad to come back. He's still getting the milk. <laughs> Can you guys do a spread video or class? Uh yeah, actually. Um I'll do one with dad. I was about to say we're gonna definitely need dad for that. Uh that guy's freaking goaded at the <laughs> drinking spreads. It's crazy. Like He's the only person that I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Maybe I should close out of my position. <laughs> um, he's that type of person. Uh, to mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I can do. We can. His do shit is do. so simple too, and he bangs on it. Yeah, every single time, bro. Old, old. Sorry, I'm not gonna call him old. He's actually not old, but <laughs> uh, Unk really be hitting shit. Unk. Um. Yeah, Uncle Dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, word. Well, it is it is post ten, so it's going oh, to be sure. about that time for me. Um, so I'm gonna bounce out. But this was fun, Geo. Thanks for hopping on with me. Yeah, no problem. Hope you all learned something. Yes. And go use this shit tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, uh, put these in action tomorrow, guys. Let's see what the fuck happens. Um, all right, see you guys. Shit, how do I fucking close this thing? Good right, luck. <laughs>